We're recording there. <laughs> you might find this a little hard to believe, Clubhouse, but we're actually on time this morning. <laughs> I think it's been the first time all week that I've actually been right on time. So I apologize uh, if I am interrupting anybody who was speaking on Clubhouse. I can't hear you right now because my headphones are hooked up to uh, our other program, which is Hashtag Rise and Grind over on Facebook. So we're about to go live on Facebook right now. Um, I've got the lovely Brindley Shapiro with us. So this is going to be an awesome awesome interview. So if you want to go uh, see Brindley in full like video, you can go to Facebook at official Glenn Lundy and you can check that out there or you can just hang out in Clubhouse and listen to the audio. Either way is up to you. All right. But we're going live on Facebook in five, four, three, two. Oh, wait a minute. I lied. Right when I said we were on time. Look at that. All right. Yeah. Oh, I want to make sure. Okay. Sorry about the delay. Just a second. <laughs> now I'm a minute late. <laughs> it's because I said it. I jinxed myself. I, I jinxed myself. I sure did. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. Making sure that's going through. Yes. Okay. All right. Beautiful. No technical difficulties this morning. Beautiful. I love it. Hey, check it out. Went downstairs this morning. First thing in the AM. Got up at 320 AM as I was walking around my house. There were children everywhere. You should have seen it. It was like a children grenade went off in the house. We had a couple people that slept over. And so I woke up and there was two babies in my bed, right? Caroline Oakland in my bed. And so I kind of crawl out of bed. I creep across the room. I go down the hall. As soon as I hit the living room, there's three more like laying one's halfway on the couch, their heads on the couch, their feet are on the ground. That one's out. That's uh, Meredith Willow's in a pile over in the corner. And then I see Fisher, he's asleep and he like snuck a sucker in the middle of the night. So he's got like a sucker attached to his chest, right? And I go around the corner and then there's Savannah and she's in in, in bed with like another uh, young lady, her, her little friend, they're 11 years old. They have a sleepover. So they're over in Savannah's bed. And then I walk downstairs, right? I go downstairs and I go through this path and uh, into the basement and the, we have a movie theater down there and there's still a little light on the movie theater. So I go into the movie theater so I can turn the light off and there's my son Joel he's asleep on the floor over in one side and then this kid looks at me his eyes wide and I said good morning Joseph it's one of the kids having a sleepover I said good morning Joseph he said good morning I'm just now going to bed <laughs> I said are you kidding me? He said, no. I said, well, this is what time I get up and, and, and start to take care of my day and get to work. And he said, well, to you, I say good night and good morning. <laughs> and I said, all right, good night and good morning and turned off the light, man. It's crazy over at the Lundy house. You never know what you're going to run into at 3.30 in the morning. Crazy, right? But then I went to my office. I opened my hashtag rise and grind planner, which I do every single morning. And as I opened my planner, the first thing I saw was a quote by my friend Sanjay Gupta. And Sanjay's quote was this, no success can compensate for failure in the home. No success can compensate for failure in the home. And as I read that, I thought about all the kids sprawled across the Lundy house that morning. And I thought, Sanjay, what a, what a, what a gift. What a gift that quote is. What a great reminder for all of us that are out here grinding, right? We're out here grinding. We're out here putting in the work. We're trying to do all of those things. Such a powerful reminder. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to leave you with this. And we're going to start today's episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind. Faith, family, fitness, finances, friends. That's all I got to say. Let's go.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? You see, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts. Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to eight, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Friday. That's right. Today is Friday, May 7th, 2021 in what I believe is the fastest year in history. I cannot believe it's already May 7th, 2021. But what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it will ever be Friday, May 7th, 2021. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most, and I do mean the absolute most, of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. If you don't know me, I am Glenn Lundy. I am the host of Hashtag Rise and Grind. And strap in today for some motivation, some education, some inspiration as I interview the one and only Brenly Shapiro. Now, Brenly is a sports psychology and performance consultant. She is a cognitive behavioral psychotherapist. I have to say her title's very slow because they're very smart. And she's also a certified sports vision trainer and, and, you guys ready for this? And the first female mental performance coach for the National Hockey League team, the Arizona Coyotes. Amazing, right? She's also the author of Fearless, Inspiring Greatness from Within, which you can go get on Amazon right now if you'd like. And just a tremendously smart and inspirational human. So we're going to talk to her about peak performance. We're going to talk about mindset hacks. We're going to talk about achieving excellence. We're going to talk about all those things. But before we do, y'all know what we got to do. <laughs> That's right. Come on. We got to get some dancing on this morning. Stay well. Listen, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. So let's go. Come on. You got to get moving, folks. You got to get moving, folks. Look, I'm going to check on Brinley in the... She's in the green room. She's dancing over there. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. We got to get this stuff in motion, folks. That's how it works. I don't care if you crawl, walk, run. I don't care what it is. Just get that body moving, all right? Super, super important. This is also the part of the show where I'm going to say good morning to you, and I want you to say good morning to me. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, whether you're over here on Clubhouse or you're checking it out on YouTube later, you're listening to the podcast, wherever it is, make sure you connect with me because I want to connect with you. Fair enough. Good morning, Mike kicked in. Great to see you this morning. What's up, Melvin Rodriguez? We got Kevin Fadley in the house. I see Tina Bacon, Mr. Bruce Miller, and John Paul Guidry. What a pair that would be. How you doing, Kenny Brock? How you doing, Mary Lynn Wilkins? We got Mike Romano, Sean Weatherby, Tim Fair, Nathaniel Banks. Don't forget West Storm, Janice Mullins is in the house. 
Janelle Griego, Tisha White. We've also got Carl Popelka. We've got Isha Flores is up in here. Rise and Grind. That's right, Bruce Miller. What's up, Robin Wilshans? And over here on Clubhouse. Oh, boy. We got a packed house over here on Clubhouse. I see Jeff the Entrepreneur is in the house. I see Mike Mario has made it to join us today. I also see Patricia is with us. My man Aisha is in the house this morning. Appreciate you hanging out with us. I really, really do. I also see Brunel and I see Becky and Annette. I see Jimmy is with us this morning and Doug and Marlena. I see Dinah is with us and Mia and Linda, Alejandro. We've got Shannon in the house, Chelsea's in the house, Allison's in the house, and Latrice, Amy, and JT Bowling is up in here. What's up, Gary Gilliam? Great to see you as well. I see Evan and Bobby and Trayvon and Daniel. My gosh, it's packed. Julie Lentini. Hi, Julie Lentini. What'd she say? Glenn, you didn't step on any kids this morning. That's right. I did not step on any kids. I dodged them all. What's up, Vicki Everett? Great to see you. I see Gina Duffy. I see, oh my goodness. We're packed. We're packed in here. What do you think about all this? What do you think about all this? Really? It's crazy, right? It's awesome. I'm <laughs> It's amazing. So, hey, check it out, guys. We're going to have some fun this morning. Hit the share button. Friendly. We're going to learn a lot from her. Get some dancing. Get in motion. And of course, remember, if you need a little help with your morning routine, you can always go to themorning5.com. Go to themorning5.com and you can download my free ebook. The Morning Five, Five Simple Steps for Extraordinary Life. And it's going to help you tap into mind, body, and spirit first thing in the morning, all day, every day. All right? All day, every day. So listen, we've been doing a series this week called Poetry in Motion. We're not going to really tap into poetry too much today, but Brindley might be able to share her favorite poem. We'll see. All right? But let's dive into today's episode of Hashtag Rising and Hashtag Rising Miss Brindley. So all week we've been studying some great poets and some great poems. We've been breaking down like just, I mean, these epic writings by these epic people. And I know you're around epic people all of the time. I also know that you're a student, incredibly intelligent in all the things that you do. Do you by chance have a favorite poem that you could add to this week's series? I do have one, but you're going to have to let me cue it up actually. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up something okay. that I love. Yeah, I'm. A, you know what? I'm gonna. You're gonna pull share up. the whole poem with us. Well, if you're gonna let me, it's yeah, kind that of, would be awesome. If we have time for it, if we have time for it in the we, end, it might take me a bit to get it going here. No so, problem. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and do that at the end. But okay, uh, that sounds perfect. That sounds. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. All right, good. Now, are you unmuted over on Clubhouse? Uh, hello. There you <laughs> I go. Heard. Okay. Yeah, perfect. That's why I asked. There you go. Thank you for yep. Oh, Liza just sent me a message. Can't hear her on Clubhouse. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got it. Beautiful. All right, good. So, Brindley, what Brindley was just saying is that she does have a favorite poem, and she's going to cue it up and share it with us a little bit later, which I'm really excited about that. I wasn't expecting that. All right, Brindley, check this out, all right? You're all right. very... Um, Clearly, you know, you're a, a super smart human. Right? You can, you got lots of titles. You can tell you put in a lot of work and a lot of research, you know, to, to, to get to where you are today. Clearly super, super smart. When I look through your posts, when I listen to your videos, when I listen to, to how you speak and the people you speak to, like, it just comes through, right? Uh, uh-oh, hold on. We can hear you twice through her mic. Uh, yeah, mute it, mute, mute it when you're not talking. All right. Oh. Okay. They're helping I me. I get help from the from the the, the gallery. <laughs> okay, perfect. Sorry. But, 
I need your help. So it's always good to have backup support, no question about it. I agree, right? We have to, we, we've got the whole team, which is amazing. All right. So super smart, super inspiring, super like pioneering over here in the things that you're doing in the hockey league. So where does all that come from? Like what was childhood like for you that created this uh, powerful, inspiring, super intelligent, pioneering Brindley? All right, we're going back to childhood. So I'm gonna take you back a few years. Where, you know what, where did it really all begin for me? I'm gonna go a long way back to my first grade. It's probably my first and most distinct memory. Um, I remember it was the first day of school and I was a little bit nervous and a little bit excited and I got all dressed and my mom took me to school. She held my hand, she walked me in. I remember meeting my very first friend and I kind of felt more comfortable and I had this friend and we sat down and we got settled in the classroom. And the teacher went around the room, we all got to introduce ourselves and she asked the big question, what are you gonna be when you grow up? And I was excited. I knew right away my answer and I was like waiting for my turn and everybody would stand up proudly and got, finally came around to me and I stood up and I, very proudly told everybody that I was going to be in the NHL because I loved hockey. And so my excitement quickly faded because the entire room burst out laughing at me. And everybody was like, you can't be in the NHL. You're a girl. And I kind of sat down and I shrunk a little bit for a minute. And then I got angry. And I remember thinking to myself, like, you can't tell me who or what I can be or become. Like, why can you say that to me? And it was, you know, I didn't really know it at the time, but it was definitely a defining moment for me because I really believed that. And, and I think my mom always helped to enforce that too. And she always kind of gave me that message that the world is yours, go take it. And I really drove myself with that, that I was going to follow my passions. I didn't know exactly where I was going to go and how I was going to get there or what I was going to do. But I, I knew that nobody was going to tell me what I could do. And you know what? Fast forward many years. I'm in the NHL right now. Um, I've played a significant role over the past few years about who we take onto our team into the NHL. And so I'm exactly where I want to be. Maybe I didn't play in the NHL. I just found a different way to get there. And that's sort of, that's where my story begins. I love it though. That is amazing, right? They're all laughing at you. They're all pointing. They're all saying, you can't, you can't, you can't. And even at a young age, you're like, stop that. No, I can do whatever the heck I want. You guys can't. That's what we, that, that should be the, uh, the, the the retort we should teach our kids, right? Anytime somebody tells them they can't say, you can't, it's because you can't, not because I can't, it's because you can't. So I love that. I love that you fought through that and I love that you had supportive uh, uh, parents, right? Supportive parents that really told you to go out there and chase your dreams and look at the impact that you're able to make uh, now by doing that. That's super cool. And like you said, I also like how you found a little different path. Maybe it wasn't you playing in the NHL, right? But yeah. ultimately, you're still impacting the results on the scoreboard in yeah. the NHL. You might not be slapping, the, <laughs> you might not be slapping that no. uh, puck in there, but you're you're definitely making impact. That's awesome. So let's talk about that a little bit. You work like you're working one on one with people and for me, working one-on-one -on -one with people can sometimes be a little bit scary, right? Like, I know a lot of people are scared of big stages, public speaking, that type of thing. That doesn't bother me a bit, right? Mm -hmm. I can stand on stage, there's 40,000 people out there. Let's go, I can, I can do that. But sometimes those one-on-one -on -one conversations are a little scarier, right? Like, cause that's, it's really deeply intimate and personal. So when did you realize you had this gift to where you could sit with people one-on-one -on -one and help them kind of stretch their imaginations and break through some of their uh, limiting beliefs and, and, and into that high performance category? Yeah, it's such a good question. Um, I think for me, I always had a passion for people. Like it was just my thing, you know, I loved helping people. I always found myself, you know, in that role wanting to help people so i think i connected with people from a very very young age but when i when i was able to blend those two worlds the sports world with what i did right you read my titles and 
I say they're just a bunch of fancy titles, but if I can summarize what I do is help people be and become the very best that they can be. That's really my job in a nutshell. And I started out, you know, in psychology and went into regular counseling. I'm a cognitive behavioral psychotherapist. I started out in a regular counseling practice. So I got used to, through my education and through my career, speaking one-on-one. -on -one. So that wasn't so difficult for me because I love connection, like connection, relationships. That's probably my primary value. I think all the education, all the titles, yeah, you need it to do what I do. But more than anything, it's the connection, uh, building that connection, building that relationship. And I think that's where everything stems from. So I think the one-on-one -on -one stuff kind of came naturally to me. I always like to do that. And I agree with you about the big stage, like because it, it's kind of more anonymous. You don't really know who's out there. <laughs> so, um, that That's okay, too. The one-on-one -on -one is okay. What I found difficult, because sometimes I work with the whole team as well. Mm -hmm. And that kind of that middle place of like the team, because I know who everybody is, but I'm still kind of on that stage, but yet it's a bit more intimate. So the first time that I walked into that NHL team, I remember I was so nervous. I had to, I had to like do my own strategies. I literally had to walk out of the room. I went to the bathroom. And I just like breathe, Brendan. Like just take a breath. You know? <laughs> and then I walked into my NHL team for the for the very first time. That's awesome. And thanks for sharing that experience with us. I'm sure that uh, I could imagine what that's like. Right, walking in with the NHL team for the first time. Here you are, first woman ever in the position a locker room full of dudes and they're like super high testosterone guys and you're gonna go yeah. in there and talk to them about how you're gonna shift their mindset right yeah, yeah, for sure and i don't know i mean you guys can't see me but I, i'm not very big i'm five foot two right so i'm like this little person coming in and i'm like all these guys are so big you know that's Sometimes amazing I get, I get on a chair actually and i'll stand up above them because i like to get them interactive and moving and stuff like that so right. I get them on their chairs a lot too. So I'll stand up so that I'm actually like a lot taller than them and I can look down on them because they're they're always looking down at me. That's awesome. We we gotta get some video footage of you doing <laughs> that. Just that would be really inspiring. You just standing on the chair, uh, talking to all these beasts, right? All these big old dudes. I love it. Uh let's talk. This is a morning show, uh, Brindley in we're, I'm a big fan of morning routines, and I believe if you can change the way you start your day, make a massive impact in your life. And the reason that I stepped into the morning routine world is I was studying a lot of uh, peak performers, highly successful people, and it seemed like they all had some type of powerful morning routine that tapped into mind, body, and spirit. Um, so I was wondering, do you see that as well at the uh, with, with the NHL, with those players? And what about you yourself? Do you have a uh, morning routine that you apply in your life every day? Yeah, I do for sure for me. Um, I think I always talk about the morning is how you're going to win your day. So that's what I wake up every day. And I really think that's sort of a quote that I drive myself with is like win the day. And I'm very intentional with my morning routine. So the first thing I try to do is not touch my phone. I used to, what was the first thing that I would do when I wake up in the morning? Everything. Like I just grab my phone and I'm sure many people can relate to that. So I have made a pact with myself, 15 minutes, I do not touch my phone. I allow myself to wake up and just kind of be in the moment. Um, and I do a little bit of meditation. So I wake up, leave my phone, and I just take a few, often just five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes, but I just take a few minutes to sort of meditate and just really be present, clear my mind. And I feel like that sort of optimizes brain power when you do that. Then I'll do a little bit of journaling for five minutes, and then I set my intentions for the day, another five minutes. So it's like a 15 minute routine, but I get clear on what it is um, I want to accomplish. What are sort of the tasks that are going to move the needle for me today? And what are the non-negotiables? And I'll put them down to paper because I think there's an amazing power when you put pen to paper, get it out of your head, set your intentions, and then I literally follow it. Like if I've made a commitment, it, I've made a commitment, it's a non-negotiable, it's on that paper, then I'm gonna figure out how to get it done. And that's how I kick off my day. I love it. I really, really love it. Uh, Brinley, you probably 
won't know this, but we actually, so I, my book that I wrote, The Morning Five, Five Simple Steps to an Extraordinary Life, step one is no snooze button. Step two is do not touch your phone first thing in the morning. Step three is write down your gratitude and goals, journal those things, right? Spend time in reflection. Then step four is take care of the physical, go get that body in motion, whatever that looks like. And step five is to send out an encouraging message to to, to lift somebody else up. So you're like literally living the uh, basically identical first few steps of your morning routine that we actually teach in the morning. I love it. And I, I do the other two steps too. I actually just, I just pace them a little bit differently than you. So that's my morning routine. I like to get on, I like to have some fitness and some movement for me midday because I feel like that re-energizes yeah. Yeah, the second half of my day. And then my nightly practice every night is gratitude before I go to bed. So beautiful. Uh, yeah. I love it. See, yeah. folks, look, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Success leaves clues, people. It's Absolutely. everywhere. And it's so simple, but at the same time, so profound. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. So listen, you've dedicated your, you've dedicated yourself to helping people push the boundaries of achievement and helping them to create a pathway for success. That is what you've dedicated your life to doing. So what I would like to know is what is step one and step two to making that happen? Yeah, so um, I think step one for me is always going to come back to mindset. Like, it's that's that's my thing okay i believe that the mind leads the body for me it all starts up here mm -hmm. and it leads your body like if you don't have the right mindset you're not going anywhere you could be the hardest worker in the room and and i'm, I'm all about the grind i believe in the grind but you got to be grinding the right way and that comes from your mind and your thinking so got to get your mind right so mindset would be number one, and then grit is going to be number two. You know, if you've got the right mindset and you've got that grittiness, that ability to persevere and keep going no matter what's thrown at you. And really, I, I'm going to add one more step is like trust yourself to figure it out. Because when you're trying to achieve something great and if you want big success in your life, it's not meant to be easy, right? Like if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So it's a grind. Success is a grind. No doubt. And I think you really have to have that trust in yourself because I think you will hit walls. Like you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. If you're really trying to achieve something great, you're trying to be in that like elite, elite, like 1% of what people are doing, then you better expect it to be difficult, but you better trust yourself to figure it out. Mm. So that's my key. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's let's talk. Let's go in a little bit as this interview goes super fast. Let's let's go into your book, Fearless, Inspiring Greatness from Within. So I'm assuming some of the things that you just talked about as far as trusting yourself and getting your mindset right. I'm assuming a lot of those things uh, are in this book right here, this awesome book, Fearless. And so talk to us a little bit about what inspired the book and maybe uh, some of the takeaways that we're going to get when we go download this guy. Yeah, I, the book really for me, it, I just I feel like Fear, I see it all the time. I see it in my work every single day. Um, fear is the biggest underlying factor that holds people back from achieving their goals and their dreams. And it's like a common theme. It doesn't matter what, like, it's always about fear, whether it's fear of failure, whether it's fear of embarrassing yourself, fear of not getting to where you want to be, fear of what people will think of you. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, but... I just, I see it everywhere, fear, fear, and a little more fear. And, you know, I've been grateful enough to have the opportunity to work with some of the best athletes in the world, um, even in my practice too. I, you know, I still have a, my own practice and I work with Olympic level athletes and, you know, college football quarterbacks and like some of the world's most elite. And it's a privilege to, to get there. And I've, I've really come all the way from working with every single level. And so I feel like I've learned so many things about what it takes to be at the top and to stay at the top of your game. And the biggest barrier that I've seen is fear. And so I wanted to help people break through that fear because I really do believe it's possible. I believe we are capable 
as human beings of doing so much more than we think we can. It's really a come back to mindset. It's that that stops us first. And so if we could smash through that fear and I've learned how to do it and I've learned how to help people do it and I see that, you know, we can break this glass ceiling, like we can break through it and I've seen it happen. And, you know, I, I love what I do. Like I say, I'm so grateful to have the privilege to do what I do. You can see um, it. it's all over you. Like yeah, I mean, it, it. it energizes me and, and I know it's possible. So the book was really about how do I take the same strategies, the same things that I use to help athletes and sort of world-class performers perform at their best? And why can't I share it with the rest of the world? So mm-hmm. the book is, you don't have to be an athlete for the book. I mean, there's a lot of sports stories in there. Um, it, it's great if you are an athlete, but it's really for everybody. How do you break through that fear and live your best life and really become the very best version of yourself? And so the book is not about um, not having fear because I think fear is a normal sure. human emotion. It's about, I can be afraid and I can figure out how to do it anyways. Mm-hmm. And all the strategies, it's real, it's an easy read. You know, there's so many strategies and taglines and um, great, great stuff in there to help you do that. I love that. I can be afraid, but I can do it anyway. Let's go, right? Let's go. It's okay to be afraid, but we can do it anyway. All right. Well, here's what here's what we're gonna do. I am going to for uh, let me pop over here real quick. Hey, for those of you, I know that your morning routine is really really important, and I know being on schedule is really really important as well. But I'm gonna hang out with Brinley a little bit longer here on Facebook. Uh, and then we're going to move over to Clubhouse for some Q&A. But I'm going to ask Brindley three more questions right here on Facebook. So if you have to go, I understand. It's okay. Like, stay in your morning routine. You can always come back. This is recorded. It'll be here later. Like, don't let me throw you off, all right? I don't want to throw you off. Uh, but before you do hop out of here, make sure you hit that share button. And also make sure you take some time today to really pour into Brindley, right? One of the best things that, that, that you can do for me if I've ever done anything for you is take a few minutes when we have someone who goes out of their way to get up this early to be a part of this show to pour into you and to pour into us best thing that we can do is just totally blow them up like I want Brindley to call me later today and say Glenn get tell your folks to back off like I can't get anything done today my phone's blowing up like connect with her encourage her allow let her know um, that you know what she what she's meant to you this morning of course go buy the book right go get the book fearless inspiring greatness from within make sure you go get that just show your support please I would greatly appreciate it and then uh, of course you can always come back and catch the rest later all right so with that said that's some housekeeping I just like to keep people true to their morning routine I think it's super, super important. Now, with that said, what separates the Joes from the pros? That's what I need to know. What separates the Joes from the pros? I, I feel like a bit of a broken record. I'm I'm going to say mindset and grit. <laughs> right. True. But that's, you know, that's what it is. I've had, the, I've had the honor to be involved in the NHL draft for the last couple of years. So I have I've probably gone through about 500 prospects and I do personality profiling. So I follow these guys all year and I do all types of testing with them and I'm measuring a lot of different things. So I, I'm going to look at their mindset. I'm going to look at their grit. Um, I look at their competitive drive. I look at their um, ability to manage conflict situations, mm-hmm. confidence, emotional control and composure so those are some of the key elements that i look for but honestly if i had to go with two it's going to be mindset and grit if you have the right mind and you have the grit and the ability to persevere you know you're you're capable of doing so much i'll actually blend my talent i'll give you my my equation okay here's my equation for success all right i'll drop this on you guys today so yeah, you're ready for it. Some people, people challenge me all the time on it, but I'm going to go with it. Bring it. I'm excited. This is my equation for success. I always say that talent is highly overrated. And people are like, well, I mean, you know, to be in the NHL, you need to have talent. Like nobody can just do that. Or, you know, to be an, a professional athlete or a superstar, whatever you do. But I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Talent is nice to have. God given talent. But I honestly give talent. contributing factor to your success, to your long-term success. Uh, Talent might get you by for some time, right? You might, yeah, if you're born with this natural God-given talent, it's a beautiful thing. 
but you're going to hit a wall at some point. If you want to keep breaking barriers and climbing levels, at some point you will get there and everybody's going to be good around you, right? Like if you're playing in the NHL or you're a professional athlete or you're at the top of your business game, everybody's good. So you're going to have to have a lot more than that for me to sustain that and to keep breaking those barriers. So I give 30% to talent. Nice to have, but it's literally only taking you 30% of the way. Mindset and mental toughness is 60% of my equation. Okay. And then I'll give 10% to luck because, you know, sometimes you need a lucky break, a lucky bounce, a lucky door open for you. But then I'll claw back of that 10 percent of luck i'm going to grab five percent of it and i'm going to throw it back onto the mentally tough people why are they any luckier than anybody else no they're not luckier but you know what they do they hang in there long enough till they get a lucky bounce or a lucky break and their door closed for them and then they get one that opens and the problem is other people could get there if they would just have the grit to hang in long enough, right? We tend to beat ourselves. Oh, this isn't working. I can't do it. It's not good enough. It's too hard. And we give up before we ever get that break. So 30 talent, 65 mindset and mental toughness, and a five, a little bit for luck. So. <laughs> I great. love it. That's great. That is great. I love that. That is a great equation. It really spells it out. We know where we need to focus, right? You can't you can't, I mean, yes, you need to focus 30% of your time on talent, right? So you should be out there working out, exercising, doing the drills, all of that stuff. And uh, you might want to spend 5% of your time buying rabbit's foot and <laughs> horseshoes or whatever it is, right? Four leaf clovers, right? Looking for four leaf clovers. But really 65% of the time needs to be spent on building your mindset and your grit. I love that. It's so simplified. All right. So I've got one more big question for you before I ask it. Did you want to bring, did you find your poem? Did you want to bring the poem to the forefront? I did. And I, I found it. Yes. I don't know. I don't even know who wrote it. I don't know if it's a poem per se, but I love it. And we've been talking so much about mindset and grit. So I really want everybody to hear this. I'm going to read it to you the very okay. first time. Okay. Everybody okay. listen to this. And I want everybody thinking about mindset. What type of mindset does this person have? And how do you think this person is feeling? And how do you think they're going to carry through their life? And then I'm going to do something. I'm going to read it again. But so let me read it the first time because it doesn't, I, I might shock you. It's not very inspirational the first time around. So here we go. Today was the absolute worst day ever. And don't try to convince me that there is something good in every day. Because when you take a closer look, the world is a pretty evil place, even if some goodness does shine through once in a while. Satisfaction and happiness don't last. And it's not true that it's all in the mind and the heart, because true happiness can be obtained only if one's surroundings are good. It's not true that good exists. I'm sure you can agree that the reality creates my attitude. It's all beyond my control. And you will never in a million years hear me say that today was a good day. Mm. Now, I don't mean to bring everybody down. <laughs> We're having an inspirational chat here. But I want you all to think about how do you think this person is feeling? How do you think that's going to translate into their actions and their behaviors on a day-to-day -day basis? Mm -hmm. Not very good. Yeah, not good at all. Not good at all. Now, I'm going to read the exact same thing to you. I am not going to change a single word in it, but what I am going to do, you guys don't get to see it. I'm going to turn it upside down. So I am going to read it from the bottom line backwards up to the top. Love it. Same words. Same words. And now, now I want you to listen to how All right. it. All right. You ready? Ready. All right. Today was a good day. And you will never in a million years hear me say that it's all beyond my control. My attitude creates the reality. I'm sure you can agree that it's not true that good exists only if one's surroundings are good because it's all in the mind and in the heart. And it's not true that satisfaction and happiness don't last. Some goodness does shine through once in a while, even if this world can be a pretty evil place. Because when you take a closer look, there is something good in every day and don't try to convince me that today was the absolute worst day ever. Ah. <laughs>
<laughs> that's my favorite. I love it. That is spectacular. Yeah, because you know what? It's all about perspective. It's all about our perspective. What perspective? What spin do we put on things? How are we going to choose to look at it? You have to be in control. There's only so much that you can control in the world. I always say take control of what you can. Mm -hmm. Let go of what you can't. But irrespective of where you are, you know, some people might be thriving. Some people might be struggling at different points in our life. We go through different things. You know, difficult emotions, it's our contract. Like it's, it's the cost of admission to a life of meaning. Right? We can't escape life without these emotions, but what we choose to do with them and how we choose to use them is going to define who and what you will become. So. Mm, 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 mm. Love it, love it, love it. Bringing the house down, I'm telling you. <laughs> I was supposed to end this interview a while ago, but I'm like, let's just keep going. This is great stuff. This is great stuff. And we will. We'll keep going over on Clubhouse for just a little bit. Brindley has said she can hang out for just a little bit over on Clubhouse, so we will keep that going um, over there, which is super, super, super exciting. So I want to do one last thing. I'm going to put you up on top of a mountain. You are on top of a mountain and all of civilization, literally all of civilization is staring up at you, right? And they're cheering for you. They're like, Brandley, 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 right? And they're doing, they started with a slow clap. It was like, I love it. Right, 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 right. And everybody starts cheering, clapping for you. Woo! They're going after it, right? And then all of a sudden, somebody walks over and hands you a microphone. And they say, Brindley, you got two minutes to drop something on them. Practical application wisdom they can apply in their life today, this week, this month, this year. What are you going to tell all of civilization? Wow. First of all, that is that is big. What am I going to tell all of civilization? I guess I'm going to, I'm going to start with um, something that I use. I use with all the athletes that I work with. And sometimes we need to have faith over fear. Um, you touched a little bit on faith. And, you know, like I say, fear is a normal human emotion. But we've got to grab hold of faith. Because sometimes there is unknown. Sometimes there is difficulty. You know, sometimes we get news that just brings us to our knees. And at those moments, we have to hang on to our faith and know that the storms come and the storms go. And so we have to keep growing, keep growing, keep building. Um, something that I strive for is I just try to be 1% better every single day. So if we do that, you know, whether it's a good day, whether it's a bad day, no matter what's happening, it's that 1% rule. Keep growing every single day. And, you know, I'll ask each and every one of you, give me 1% today. And I know you can do 1%. 1% is manageable. But each day, if you can commit to 1% better, learn a new skill, be a kind person, um, just grow in some way. I, I'm always looking for opportunities to grow. So I really encourage everybody to do that because we can all manage 1% and 1% stacked on 1% and 1% and 1%, you know, little by little, a little starts to become a lot. And take all of that and then I'm going to wrap it in because I think you gave me two minutes. So I hope I'm still within my time. Um, I'm going to finish that off with a little sprinkle on top, which is... Um, kindness and empathy because i always say that in this world it's not always what we do but truly we make our mark by how we make people feel and you can you can climb mountains by spreading kindness and love and empathy um and just changing the world so little by little you know we can we can do amazing things together so that would be absolutely Love it. Faith over fear, 1% <laughs> better every single day. And with kindness and empathy, we can change the world. Brindley Shapiro, 
Unbelievable. You are absolutely fabulous. Clearly, you are uh, 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 a child of God, uniquely made. The God of the universe made you to be the best version of yourself you can possibly be, and you're stepping into it. You're leaning into it every day, and because of that, you're making a massive impact on this planet, and today, You've made a massive, massive impact on me and this group here, this morning group. And I, for one, absolutely love you for it. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you so much, too. And, and honestly, right back at you with everything, like spreading your message, having, you know, having this platform, sharing your love, your grace, your faith with all these people, inspiring them, kicking their morning off every single day. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to share with great people and, you know, like I say, together we can, we can make a real difference. So thank no you. No doubt. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hang out for just a second. I'm going to meet you over on clubhouse. Okay. You guys right. go get Brinley's book, fearless, inspiring greatness from within. Oh, I just noticed Brinley, Brinley. I'm going to come back to Brinley real quick. Did you have the title for that poem? Some people wanted the title for that poem. I don't have a title. I don't yeah, even know. They're going to have to look it up. They're going to have to look. They'll call it. Well, it's probably like the upside down perspective. Or what something. I can do, what it, what it could do is maybe um, email it to you. And if you want to put it up on the platform somehow, does that, does that work? Actually, I, I got a better idea. Do you have yeah. um, like an Instagram or? or yes. Or, how about they connect with you on Instagram? So anybody who wants the poem, I love go ahead and connect with Brinley on Instagram in her DMs. <laughs> that way you guys can be connected and she'll send it to you that way. I think that's an even better idea. All right. That's perfect. Yeah, every single person. If you DM me, give me a follow on Instagram and um, I will definitely, I will shoot that off to you for sure. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, blow her up today. All right. Blow her up today for real. That was absolutely fantastic. And make sure you go get her book, Fearless, Inspiring Greatness from Within. I pos I'm, I'm, I'm positive that you will not regret that purchase right there. It'll make a massive impact in your world. All right. Thanks for joining us here today on Hashtag Rise and Grind. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that, um, hit that hit that share button. Make sure you share this out. Tag a friend, those types of things. If you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. All right. Go to glennlundy.com if you need more videos and you'll find 865 episodes of stay Hashtag well, Rising well. Grind. Uh, you can connect to the Hashtag Rising Grind. So you're welcome to go there. Or you can just shoot over to Clubhouse right now. And you can hang out with me and Brindley. We're going to hang out over at Clubhouse. There's just a QA, a glass of sessions, and so forth. So you guys are welcome to meet me on the ground. You're welcome to go to Clubhouse.com. You're welcome to stay home by today. And we'll come back and hear it again on Monday morning. All right, go out there, have an amazing Friday, and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you. Good morning. All my people for the sunrise. Stepped into my greatness, feeling powerful and energized. Thankful to be alive. Hashtag blessed. Write my mission, vision, values, and my gratitude list. I'm building up momentum. I'm making good decisions. I rise, I grind, I get it. Ain't no doubt that I'm committed. Cause who really loses if I don't win? Can't cheat the grind, only get what you put in. So I'm mastering my mentals. I'm focused on my physical. I'm developing spiritually and manifesting miracles. I'm gonna get it started, have a party in the morning, and I'm gonna wake the